I have a list of questions that I run through in my daily morning practice. I sit with them for about 15 minutes each morning and I really give myself over to the morning practice. One of the questions I ask myself is really important. It helps me stay productive without pushing myself into a grind over caffeinated mode that often really ends up leading me to burnout. And so this one question has really helped me prevent that. And so here it is. What is the one thing I can get really excited about today? You might not think that it's a powerhouse question, but it is. And that is what we're going to unpack today. And I want to hear from you. What is one thing that you are excited about today? If you're excited about this topic, be sure to drop a comment below and hit that subscribe button because some real talk is coming your way. Let's dive right into the topic like we normally do. So first of all, why even ask myself that question? Well, here's that real talk that I just mentioned. Because living the dream is not always so dreamy, right? I can work from home. I'm in my home office right now recording this. And that is a gift. That is the dream. And I also have dream clients. It's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this particular topic because in my mindset practice this morning, this very morning, like this was not a pre-planned topic, I said, you know what? I am really excited about my clients today. They are the type of people that I've been pursuing. They've invested in themselves. They've invested with me. And I know that we're going to get results and I cannot wait to sit down and talk with them today. But there are tasks in our businesses that are not our favorite or are perhaps outside of your comfort zone. And so here's a non-business example, but I felt like it was a little more relatable than some business topics. Cool. So I have a cat. His name is Oliver. He is the best cat. And I loved everything about him. We got him as an adult cat. He was the perfect fit for our family. However, like most pet owners, I do not like cleaning the litter box. And so I have to think about and weigh out, do I like this cat enough that I'm willing to put up with cleaning a stinky litter box? So when I do think about getting rid of him, it makes me sad. So I clean the litter box, right? So when we slow down and ask ourselves this question, oftentimes we find that we can hype ourselves into doing even the least fun tasks, like maybe it's accounting that you don't love, or maybe it's copywriting, whatever it is that's in your business that you don't really love to do, but you know is important to do. Sometimes we can gain perspective around the why or like what will happen as a result of me doing this thing. And we can start to get excited about it. Um, and you might even surprise yourself and, and start saying like, I actually am excited to go live when that has been like a, a, something that you really had to like push yourself into doing, or you've dreaded it because it's just not something you're comfortable with yet. So this question is also on the flip side, a great cue to help you see if consistently, consistently you are not excited about something that, and that maybe you need to pivot or reframe or outsource that piece. And so I wanna keep running with this litter box example. If you're not a cat person, just stick with me, cool? So I hated cleaning the litter box. I hate looking at it. Um, I've had cats my whole life, but this particular guy, he's very messy. And so I just hated the mess that he would make around the litter box. So I built a bench seat and I'll have to tag that somewhere and, um, and link it so you guys can see what I ended up doing. But I got a bench, I cut a hole in the side. So it's kind of like, a you know, a very nice cat box, put the litter box inside of it. All of the tools for cleaning, put a little runner mat that would catch the litter from his feet. And so by the time he walks out, there's very litter, very little litter that tracks out behind him, which has been a gift, right? Also, it's not an eyesore for me anymore. It's not this thing that's looming and stinking over in the corner. And it just made the whole experience in having Oliver so much more tolerable. So in this same way, where are some things that you can, you know, reframe the process? Because I also tried to outsource this piece. I tried to outsource it to my husband and he was not having it. So I realized this is my cat. I've got to take care of the litter box and that's okay too. Um, 
And so maybe it is um, a pivot. Maybe, um, maybe having a cat is just not the right fit for our family. And we explored that as an option and found that, no, we really like this guy and he's a good fit for our family. So the three options that you have in your business are to pivot, to reframe, or to outsource. Whatever that piece is that is not causing you to be excited about jumping into your business every day. Cool. So there's a lot of reasons that we may not enjoy something. It just may not be fun. It could be overwhelming. It might feel like it's not working, or maybe it feels like you just don't know enough. And so it's intimidating. Um, slowing down and saying, why am I excited or not excited about this thing becomes a very powerful question. And so I wanted to also share a story about why I got excited today. So I got two, I have two client calls today, both of which are dream clients in the truest sense. And I want to share a little bit about why that is. And it has to do with how I got started in my business way back in 2015. So short story time, once upon a time in 2015, I was working and living in Central America. We were doing full-time admissions work. We were working in rural communities and villages. And at the time we had to raise support for the work that we were doing. So I was thrown headfirst into the murky waters of marketing and fundraising, but I quickly started treading water and I noticed a trend that there were a lot of people with a very beautiful missional vision and powerful purpose and tons and tons of passion, but they did not have this ability to compel people to get on board with their vision in terms of financial support. For whatever reason, my husband and I excelled at this um, in a more relational and natural aspect. And so being wired the way that I am, I also started looking for ways to improve our presence and our donor relationships because we are highly relational. And so when we were in the field, it became very hard to stay visible. It became very hard to stay front of mind for our people and maintain those relationships. It's just because the nature of our work was so heavy, we're working in areas and living in areas where there's hardly any internet, there's hardly any electricity. And so we had to figure out a way to stay front of mind so that they could follow up with us and we could follow up with them and we could give them updates about the work that we were doing. That's just good nonprofit business management practice. And so I started to learn a little bit about online marketing and email marketing uh, systems like MailChimp and ConvertKit, ActiveCampaign. And I started to get really excited about this because I'm a more techie person. And I started implementing these things for our family and the missions work that we were doing. And our workflows, our relationships, they flourished. We were able to maintain those things and continue to grow. And so when I saw that this was working, I got very excited and I tried to help other people in our nonprofit you know, world understand what I was doing and what I was talking about so that their visions and their networks could be amplified. And I was just kind of met with blank stares, like blink, blink, like they had no idea what I was talking about. So I found that a bit discouraging. I didn't know how to get people on board because the nature of work, you're working full time, right? And sometimes it feels like marketing and building a website and all this stuff. If it's not in your zone of genius, it can be like, no, not today. And that is a wise decision for some people. Anyways, I found out that there were nonprofits online who were aware of what I was talking about and just needed help with the implementation of it. And so as I started exploring that, I found that there are regular for-profit businesses as well that needed help with their branding and their visibility. And so today I worked with over 40 clients, some of them nonprofit, some of them for-profit, and that has been an absolute gift, literally dream work. And I get to work with two nonprofit clients today, and that's what really excites me about my work today. Nonprofits have really strong mission statements. They have a very clear vision, and they're super passionate, and they know how to make a dollar go far. So when someone in the nonprofit world invests in themselves and they invest with me, I know that they're really serious about getting results for their organization, and for the people that they're serving. So it is, um, it's not a whim when they invest and it's not half-hearted interest. These are heart-centered entrepreneurs in the most literal sense. And they just happen to have this nonprofit label on them. You can be a heart-centered entrepreneur and be for profit. But when these people, when they get unstuck 
in our sessions and when these light bulbs start flashing over their heads, man, that means lives are going to be impacted positively. And I got to be a part of that process. That is what lights me up. That is what gets me excited about my work. Now, are there days when I'm dragging my butt out of bed to get up and do some consistent um, activities and actions in my business? Absolutely. And that is the real talk that I think some people don't talk about. They talk about hustle, they talk about grind, but a lot of times we'd be hustling and grinding for all the wrong reasons. It is not about the hustle, it's not about grind. It is about hard work, it is about intentional action. And it is about making sure that you're still doing something that excites you, something that lights you up every day, even if, you know, it feels like the equivalent of cleaning the litter box, right? In your business, that is okay. As long as you know why you're doing it and the outcome and result of you doing those actions. And so that is what I wanted to share with you today. What is one thing? that you are excited about or that you can get excited about in your business today. One thing, and I love just focusing on one thing because it's a very focused question. It eliminates all these other things you can get excited about and helps you dial into the one thing that you should be most excited about. If you're not finding that you're not excited about things in your business, that either means you need to pivot and cut it out or you need to outsource it and hand it off to somebody else to do for you, or you just need to reframe it and make it a little bit easier. And this can be in all areas of your life. It doesn't just have to be related to your business. It could be, what do I hate about cooking dinner? I hate doing the dishes. Well, invest in a dishwasher if that's the case. Um, If you do not like changing dirty diapers, like you're not necessarily going to throw out you know, the baby with the bath water, but you might set up a diaper changing station that feels a lot more organized and easier for you to use or set up your diaper bag in a way that feels more effective and efficient for you, right? Or you might outsource it to somebody else. That's okay too. But the point is sometimes you just have to reframe the nature of the work and approach it from a different angle or just make it, make it nicer. Set your office up so that it feels better. Put a plant in there, you know, make your space easier to work and do these little things that will help you out and get excited about your work because you do have every opportunity to build your dream job and to pursue something that you are passionate about and that lights you up. That is it for today's training, but I do want to hear from you. What is the thing that you're getting excited about in your life, in your business that lights you up? And if you're not getting excited and you're getting stuck with this and you're not sure if you should pivot or outsource it, or you don't know how to reframe it, shoot me a DM, comment below. Let me um, share with, share, share with me what you are working through. And I'd be happy to come alongside you and support you. It is my joy to come alongside people and organizations that have clarity on what they want to do, but are getting stuck a little bit in that process. So that's it for today. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this mini training. If you are interested in learning more about my morning and mindset routines, check out Renew. It's my mindset practice that I use every day to help me hit my goals, both financially and impact wise. And it's totally free. And I'm sharing with you what I do and what I use in my own business. So feel free to check that out. The link is in the description below.